Walk into any auto parts store and you're hit with a wall of engine oil brands. Mobile One, Castrol Edge, Pennzoil Ultra, Valvoline Advanced, Quaker State, Royal Purple, Lucas, Liquimoli, Motul. Every bottle claiming ultimate protection, race-tested durability, and longer engine life. But here's the uncomfortable question the industry hopes you never ask. With all these logos and all these promises, how many of these oils are actually different? Or is the entire market built on the illusion of choice? Today, we're going to peel back the label, literally, and reveal who really makes your engine oil. While you may see hundreds of brands on shelves, behind the scenes, the engine oil world is controlled by a tiny group of companies, a handful of refiners, a handful of additive suppliers, and a few commercial blenders produce the majority of what you pour into your engine, then everyone else just slaps their logo on the bottle. I've gone through technical papers, industry financials, API licensing documents, additive supplier data sheets, and OEM approvals to give you the unfiltered story no brand wants you to hear. And by the end, you'll never look at that $25 jug or that $5 jug the same way again. Most brands aren't brewing their own secret formulas in isolated labs. The differences often come down to marketing, label design, and maybe a small tweak in additive concentration. If engine oil were coffee, most brands would be selling the same beans from the same plantation, just roasted slightly differently and packaged in different bags. This illusion of endless variety exists because the lubricant industry has gone through massive consolidation. Today, five companies dominate over 70% of the U.S. passenger car motor oil market. ExxonMobil, Shell, BP via Castrol, Chevron, and Valvoline. These giants don't just sell their own oils, they also act as toll blenders, quietly producing oils for OEMs like Toyota, Honda, GM, Hyundai, and Ford, as well as for dozens of store brands. While these companies control the physical production, the chemical identity of the oil comes from an even smaller group. Four companies supply roughly 80% of all additive chemistry on the planet, Lubrizol, Infinium, Afton Chemical, and Chevron Oronite. If base oil is the bread, these companies supply the jam, butter, and everything that gives flavor. Because only a few additive suppliers exist, even competing brands often rely on the same chemistry in different ratios to meet specifications like API-SP, ILSAC-GF6, or specific OEM approvals. This is where private label oils enter the picture. Companies like Shell, ExxonMobil, and Chevron produce their own base oils and run advanced blending plants. They control everything from the molecular structure to the final packaging, but they also blend oils for others, lots of others. Meanwhile, household retail brands like Walmart, AutoZone, Napa, O'Reilly, and Tractor Supply don't refine anything at all. They hire independent blenders who buy base oils and additives from those same giants and mix them to meet certification requirements. Walmart's Supertech, for example, has historically been blended by Warren Performance Products. O'Reilly's house oil often comes from Omni Specialty Packaging. Napa's oil has long been linked to Ashland, the parent company of Valvoline. Out of the 200-plus brands on the U.S. market, well over half are simply rebranded versions of formulas coming from 10 to 15 major toll blenders. To understand why so many oils are functionally similar, we need to walk through how engine oil is born. The first step is selecting the base stock, which defines the oil at a molecular level. About three quarters of what's in that quart is base oil, and the remaining portion is a concentrated cocktail of additives that does all the heavy lifting, preventing wear, neutralizing acids, keeping sludge suspended, and ensuring flow stability. Base oils are grouped into five categories, group 1 through group 5, based on purity, stability, and resistance to oxidation. Group 1 and 2 are conventional mineral oils, refined directly from crude. Group 2 has become the standard for almost all non-synthetic oils. Group 3 base stocks undergo extensive hydrocracking and molecular restructuring, allowing them to be marketed as full synthetic. This is why most mainstream synthetics like Castrol Edge and Valvoline Advanced are built on Group 3 base stock produced by the same major refiners. 
Group 4 is PAO, true lab-engineered synthetic molecules used in high-end and severe-duty oils. Group 5 is a catch-all category that includes esters and other specialty synthetics favored in racing and boutique formulas for their exceptional film strength. Once the base oil is chosen, the second phase begins, the additive package. This is where the real engineering happens, as additives determine everything from sludge resistance to fuel efficiency to wear protection. Additive companies design fully engineered additive systems that are pre-approved to meet API, ILSAC, ACEA, and OEM specifications. The core functions of these additives are universal. Detergents keep metal surfaces clean. Dispersants suspend debris. Anti-wear agents like ZDDP form protective films. Viscosity modifiers help the oil maintain thickness. Without a properly engineered additive package approved by one of these four suppliers, a blender cannot legally claim API certification at all. After the base oil and additive package are selected, the final stage shifts into enormous industrial blending plants. These are massive operations where base stocks and additives are metered into giant stainless steel vessels with scientific precision. Every batch is mixed under controlled temperature to ensure uniformity. Once the blend is approved, white labeling begins. A single tanker truck could deliver oil that is later bottled as Pennzoil Platinum under one contract and Mopar OEM oil under another. The fluid itself is identical until the moment it's pumped into separate containers. This happens at Warren, Omni Specialty, and other large contract blenders, where one facility fills dozens of branded bottles, often with formulations only distinguishable in a lab. Automakers like Ford, GM, Honda, Toyota, and BMW do not refine oil. They write a specification and contract the big oil companies to make it. Toyota's genuine 0W20 might be blended by ExxonMobil, while BMW's twin power oil is supplied by Fuchs. Regardless of who blends the oil, it must meet the automaker's spec every single time so the performance remains consistent across suppliers. At the top of the food chain sits ExxonMobil, the undisputed heavyweight. Their facilities churn out Mobile One, Exxon, and Esso, but the influence goes far beyond that. Exxon blends certain batches of Walmart SuperTech, GM's AC Delco, Caterpillar fluids, and even some Toyota and Nissan oils in Latin America, depending on contract year. Their joint venture additive company, Infinium, is responsible for a huge chunk of the world's approved additive packages. Right beside them is Shell, the global giant behind Pennzoil and Quaker State. Their Rotella line dominates the diesel world, and their blending plants, especially the massive Brockway facility in Pennsylvania, supply fluids for Mopar, Harley-Davidson, and motor oil sold under Canadian Tire's house brands. Because Shell owns both Pennzoil and Quaker State, these two competitors often share the same base stocks before diverging into slightly different additive tweaks. Castrol under BP follows a similar pattern. They maintain a premium image, but also produce Arco lubricants, several industrial blends, and turf oils for John Deere in certain regions. Castrol Edge sold in Europe might be blended in the UK, while the American version could be mixed in New Jersey or Texas, but both rely heavily on additive packages sourced from Infinium. Same name, different continent, nearly identical chemistry. Chevron, known for Havoline and the Dello line, is another quiet powerhouse. Their Oronite division produces additives used by half of the industry, meaning many oils that aren't Chevron branded still carry Oronite chemistry. Philips 66 and Conoco, although smaller than the main three, blend Kendall, Union 76, and Ford's Motorcraft line, meaning the official Ford oil is simply a Conoco product wearing Ford graphics. Their Oklahoma facilities also feed everything from Circle K gas station bottles to private labels you'd never guess came from a major refinery. Valvoline, now split from Ashland, creates not only its own lineup, but also Napa and Carquest oils. Warren Oil Company is the undisputed king of store brand lubricants, producing massive volume volumes for AutoZone, Advance Auto Parts, Tractor Supply, Loves, Sheets, and more. And you begin to understand how a handful of companies produce hundreds of different brands. 
So which brands actually blend their own fully independent formulas? Only a few. Amsoil remains a boutique manufacturer that develops its own PAO heavy synthetics. Redline is ester rich and chemically distinct from mainstream oils. Motul designs many of its blends in house, especially its ester formulations. Liqui Moly in Germany also engineers proprietary blends, especially for European performance engines. So, do the differences actually matter? The short answer is yes, but not in the way marketing suggests. The major oil companies that refine their own base oil invest heavily in research, precision blending, and validation testing. This consistency is where the real value lies. Some brands do have exclusive technology that gives them a measurable advantage. Shell's gas-to-liquid process creates Group 3 Plus base oils that offer naturally high purity. Amsoil and Redline use PAO and ester bases that resist shear under extreme heat. In the end, what you're really paying for is confidence. A proven brand offers peace of mind, a reliable additive package, and consistent results bottle after bottle. The variety on the shelf is real but the performance landscape is far more uniform than the labels imply.